We're in the mountains of Jalisco, Mexico, in the Pueblo Magico of Mascota. It's day two, my adventure hat is on, as we are on our way to one of the best breakfast spots in town, Cafe Napoles. Got the adventure hat on, it's time for a full day of adventures. We're gonna head into Mascota, grab some breakfast, some rancheros bebos, and um, some bevelos rancheros. Right now we're driving on the cobblestone roads of Mascota, something that Mascota is famous for, keeping its old cobblestone roads that 50 years ago used to be infected with horses and stables. And today, uh, a lot of trucks, Chewy, a lot of trucks. A lot of trucks. Chewy's Chui, Chui, house that Chewy used to live in right there. It wasn't mine, it was renting. Oh, renting. Cafe Napoles offers great Mexican and Italian cuisine. Try their cappuccinos and traditional Mexican favorites for breakfast and their Italian pizzas for lunch. The cafe is in a great location with beautiful decor, a friendly staff, and it's right next to the plaza. We walk across the street to Sonia's Mondelis, a restaurant and a bar for a quick michelada. Right after, we walk over to a family home to get ready for a crazy ride through the mountains of Mascota. So we're here walking the streets of uh, Mascota, coming back from the center. Marissa likes her michelada. About 45 minutes outside of Mascota is Juanacatlan Lake, created from a crater of a massive extinct volcano. But as crazy and beautiful as it is, the drive to get there might be even crazier. The climb is slow as the road is part alternately paved, part cobblestone, and part unpaved. It clings to hillsides with amazing views of the surrounding valleys and the peaks of the Sierra Madre Mountains. I'm pretty sure mostly trucks can get up here and at times for two cars to pass each other, some improvisation is needed. Now we're, we're at a part where it's gonna get really rough. After you reach the top, you will come face to face with a luxurious mountain retreat of Sierra Lago. It's a getaway from it all resort and spa that offers beautiful cabana suites, local food cooked by a local grandmother, and booze with amazing views. Rates do range from $350 to over $550 a night, and for good reason. It's also all inclusive. Right next to this boutique hotel is the Juanacatlan Lake. If you follow the road to the right of the resort, you will get to a visitor parking lot where you can take a long stroll along this beautiful crater lake that offers fishing, small boat rentals and other activities. It's chilly up here as we take a leisurely stroll along the pathway and even grab a few expensive beers from the bar at Sierra Lago. After a uh, maybe like a 45 minute bumpy ride, we've made it here to what's the lake called? Sierra Lago. No, no, what's the other name? I don't know. I keep forgetting it's Juanacaca. a hard one. Juanacaca. Juanacatlan. So, a story from the locals here uh, they've said that this lake, which was uh, an old ancient volcano crater, they said that it's uh, so deep that it was actually used to dispose of bodies. Um, and that I guess recently they, you know, they cleaned the lake, and uh, they put out a um, took out a bunch of bodies from the lake. So shortly after, as the sun is going down, it's time to make the return trip down the mountain into Mascota. It's a beautiful night in town as we head to one of the top rated restaurants in Mascota, El Tapanco. They serve Italian and Argentine cuisine with a large selection of wines. Stephanie is a wine enthusiast and this was one of her favorite places we ate at on the whole Mexico trip. From the tasty appetizers to the wood oven pizzas and cuts of beef, this place was just plain delicious. I actually wanted to avoid this restaurant because I wasn't looking forward to eating Italian in a Mexican village, but I was totally wrong because El Tapanco is a must visit. It's a stunning night in Mascota as we take a small evening walk back to our casitas. 
it's time to get some rest because tomorrow is another eventful day of exploring not just Mascota but another mountain town. So this is day three here in Mexico. It's about eight o'clock in the morning right now. The mornings here are very, very chilly, but very beautiful. During the day, it does get very hot. And then again, at night, it gets it gets pretty chilly. We were hoping to uh, make some instant coffee. And then we realized that Stephanie's mom got us decaf. I have no idea why decaf even exists. And then here's Emma just chilling. She's actually sleepy. She might fall asleep again. She had a good... She had a good sleep last night, actually. We're, we're proud of her. We have a little coffee dilemma in the morning, but after stopping by the local OXO, we fuel up and are ready for a homemade, traditional Mexican breakfast served on the ranch. So we were looking to uh, go grab some breakfast here in Mascota, but we just got invited to a family's ranch to have uh, breakfast. With ranches, farms, and fields all around us, we stop at a family ranch in the area for a breakfast with a beautiful view. We check out the many different animals as we enjoy the bebos, cheeses, spicy salsas and beans with a side of home-brewed coffee served in a traditional Mexican Talavera mug. Mexico has a territory of 198 million hectares of which 15% is dedicated to agricultural crops and 58% which is used for livestock production. Much the country is actually too arid or too mountainous for crops or grazing. Forests also cover 34% of the country, but Mascota does seem to have plenty of ranches around as it sits in a good area for agriculture. Their ranch is very spacious, so one way they get around the property is with ATVs. Naturally, we have to test drive a couple. After riding around the ranch, it's time to bust out the big bowl as we head to the center of town for a popular mascota ice cream. All right, so they're taking us in this badass, what's this called? Razor. Oh, Razor. They're taking us in this badass Razor to the center of town where we're gonna fly the drone and get some really cool views over the uh, center of Mascota. With the wind in our faces, we stumble over the cobblestone roads of tight-filled neighborhoods and narrow streets. Welcome to Mexico's Puebla Magico, Mascota. The town center of Mascota is protected daily by rifle-wielding policemen with bulletproof vests. They're pretty scary to look at if you're not used to it, but that's the whole point, as they use intimidation tactics that make you feel safe. Even with everything you see on TV, I always felt comfortable wherever I went in Mexico, even at nighttime. Just don't be stupid. What's the dessert called again? Nive con coca. So our friend and driver here is now going to take us so we can try some specialty mascota ice cream that's popular here. Basically, it's it's ice cream with Coca-Cola, right? Nueve con Coca. And it's called Nueve con Coca. And there's nothing else in it, right? Just uh... Nueve con Coca. All right. We passed mariachis doing their thing at a local quinceanera as I admire the music and the beautiful red dress. We stop at Neveria Rosita for a traditional and popular Mexican dessert called Nueve con Coca. It's like a root beer float but with cola. It's a hot and musty day and the ice cream refreshes the soul. We finish up the floats while the mariachi play in the background. It's time to rush back to the house as we have a scheduled van coming to pick us up to leave Mascota to another magical mountain town called San Sebastian.
this is the most inconveniently placed staircase that I've probably ever seen. So you have a very narrow space to try to get through here without hitting your head. Designs. What happened, Don? Quiero mear a mi arbolito. <laughs> 